Hi everyone, welcome to Brewing Life, Publicis Sapiens' own technology chat show. My name is Neha Pathak. Today I'm going to take a little break from talking about just technology and talk about a topic which is relevant to all of us who are working in organizations that are looking to transform themselves. You know, many established firms who want to stay competitive, who want to stay relevant today, are looking at transformation in multiple aspects. Some of them look at, you know, introducing automation. Some are looking at modernizing systems. Uh, some of them are uh, looking at changing the ways of working. But one thing many companies do not pay enough attention to is cultural transformation. Now to talk about this topic of what role does culture play in the transformation of an organization, I have with me our Global Chief Talent Officer of Publicis Sapient, Kameshwari Rao. Welcome Kams to the show. Nice to be here Neva, thank you for inviting me. So Kams, as a people leader, what does organizational transformation really mean to you? See when you think about transformation, the way I I define it, I guess, for myself, it's not about making small incremental changes, you know, it's about forging a whole new path. Now, in, if you look at what you just said, which is, you know, in the context of where we are in the world today, which is, you know, just there's so much change that's happening, you know, there's technology changes, there is um, the kind of audience that we have, all of that is changing, our clients are changing, what they are asking of us is changing. Um, in that context, you know, if we don't change who we are, how we think, what we do as a people, I don't think we can actually transform as an organization. So in my mind, you know, when you think about organizational transformation, while all of these things play an important role in it, I think changing our people and changing the culture of the organization is a very, very big part. And rather than coming last, it probably needs to come first. Uh, as you think about transforming ourselves. How would you define culture? I mean, the, I, I know culture means a lot of things to a lot of people, but in an enterprise context, how would you define culture? See, to me, is culture is the feel that you get as you walk into a place. It's about, um, it's about the personality of the organization. Um, it's about, you know, the values that they have, it's about the beliefs that the people hold, it's about the behaviors that they display. I mean, all of this actually combines together to form this uh, very unique combination, which, you know, is a differentiator um, for us. You know, I call it actually the secret sauce that differentiates us from the rest of the other companies out there. So to me, culture is just that um, intangible feel that you get as you walk into any organization or you know in our case into our organization. You know Kams I've heard you say this that culture is a choice. Right. Uh, what do you really mean by that? Could you elaborate? I'll take our company as an example because to me it's about not letting things just be but it's about making a deliberate attempt to change who you are right that's why I said I believe that culture is a choice so if you think about our context we changed the strategy of the company we are now working on digital business transformation which requires a whole new way of thinking about the things we do um, about doing the way the things that we do and just you know changing so it's about changing our mindset it's about changing our behaviors when I mean, we spoke about all that which is about the culture so if I think why I say it's a choice is because when we real, want to realize the vision of being a digital business uh, transformation partner for our clients, it's about what are the deliberate choices that we have chosen to make. So for, you know, for example, last year when we um, had this vision, we went about actually engaging almost everyone in the company to talk about what should the purpose of the organization be. We actually took inputs from more than 2,500 people directly and indirectly on what should be the values that would help us actually achieve transformation of ourselves to be able to enable our clients, right? So I believe that when an organization is spending time not just on thinking about it, it's about engaging the audience in that conversation and then, you know, now making the deliberate attempt to make the shifts that we need to make, um, it will get us to where we want to be and it will transform us as an organization and, and therefore I believe it's a deliberate choice. 
that we need to make. Our culture at Publicis Sapient has been uh, really well known, you know, for all of these years. We've, be, we've had case studies in Howard and Yale on our culture. So now when you're talking about shifting, right, from where we used to be and the shift we're trying to make, what do you think continues to differentiate us today? What makes Publicis Sapient culture different? You know, I'm, I'm hoping that somebody else now writes a case, um, case study on how we went about redefining our culture because as you rightly said, I think we had a very strong culture, you know, culture at that level can become like a cult and to actually make the shift I think is quite difficult um, and that's a journey that we've embarked upon. It's not something that will happen overnight because we actually almost have to rewire people and their heads around it. Uh, so let me take a couple of examples in, in terms of just um, how are we engaging our people um, in actually helping model the shifts or you know role model the shifts and what they need to do. So one of our um, core values as you know is inclusive collaboration, right? So if I were to give you an example of how we involve the people to actually think about it in a way that not only internalize for them the definition of that in terms of the behaviors, um, you know, and also sort of make it happen. So we had a group of people who came to us and said, you know, we need to paint this wall or, you know, it was an empty wall, white, big wall. Um, and then they said, we want to paint the wall. And we talked about like, what should be the content of that wall that you want to paint? Um, as we deliberated, it was a group of, you know, artists, it was a group of designers, technologists, you know, these are interest groups in the company that we have. Um, and they said, you know, okay, let's, since we just introduced our values, you know, shall we paint the wall on our values? Um, then the conversation evolved further. We involved, you know, some of our leadership teams, you know, some of the teams that actually came up with the values. And we said, okay, how would you depict the values? Um, we let the conversation evolve and, you know, it is an interpretation of our values now that is actually a living thing on a wall. So to me, it actually is a, such a wonderful example of not just the fact that you know, all those people came together and demonstrated the behavior of being inclusive and being collaborative, but we now have something to show for it. And you know, and you know we've never just believed in posters. We never actually put up our values on posters. For us, values is about how we behave. So to me, that's a great example of that. And you know, I have examples of other, um, you know, other values as well, where we actually have made it come to life. Um, they, and we will kind of talk about it, we are using different forums by which, you know, people can understand what that means and that to me is what differentiates us, right? We don't just, it's not like, you know, 10 people went into a room, came up with them, but it's about, first of all, how we took the whole organization on the journey and then how we are making it real now for people. So to me, that is the differentiator. When you look at culture that enables transformation camps, what are, say, some of the key behavioral shifts that you think people need to make? You know, everyone is obviously now using the word transformation a lot. And yeah. that is because, <laughs> and that's because honestly, there is a lot of change, right? And I think the pace of change as well. Um, so I think what I have been basing a lot of my own thinking on is that there are three key things that you need to um, think about, everyone needs to think about, is first of all, it's about being agile. So it's not just about, when you say agile, it's not just about being fast, but it's about being fast, experimental, and sort of keep on doing something, right? So for example, instead of trying to roll out some, a 12 month plan, you know, can we make it a one month plan? It's like that fast, right? So you experiment, you see it in a pilot, you see how it works, and then, you know, sort of make the adjustments and send, do the next iteration. So it's a little bit about being agile. The second thing that I think people need to think about and need to constantly be aware of is learning. Um, everything is changing. The technologies are changing around us. So even, at, you know, park the fact that, you know, our technologies definitely need to keep themselves updated. But, you know, let's say even we in HR need to keep ourselves abreast of what's going on outside. So if I want to deliver a learning solution today, uh, I need to know what's going on on the mobile space, for example. It's not just about knowing that you can develop an app on the mobile, but it's about saying, okay, can it be a podcast or can it be a webcast, can it be a YouTube, whatever, right? Whatever you can actually access on the mobile. So unless we keep aware of those things and learn those things on an ongoing basis, as well as the developments that are obviously happening in your own craft, um, I think it'd be very hard to keep up with the changing times. 
um, and last but not the least, I think, is about having a design mindset. We've talked about collaboration, and I think that everyone, you know, understands the need for that. But you know, when you think about it in the true spirit of having a design mindset, it's about no one person now can actually have the skills or the crafts or the capabilities to develop any solution on their own. So it needs multiple kinds of skill sets coming together to be able to do that. And for that, you need to have a design mindset that incorporates all these different elements and then brings that together to create a solution that is far more connected. So to me, those are the three things. It's about being agile. It's about having learning as a key ingredient that you need to think about. And third one is the design mindset. Thank you, Cam, for this wonderful conversation. I know it is a journey for us as we evolve our culture and, you know, we're trying to define who we are and how we get there. Thank you for leading this from the front. So on that note, I am signing off. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to add in the comment section below. Do not forget to subscribe and like our page. Neha Patak signing out.